When you truly love a series, you want to invest in it, and it often feels like there's no better way to do that than pay out for that special edition. And to be fair, a lot of titles do put together some truly awesome packages to tempt you, but they're not always winners. Just because something comes with a pretty hefty price tag doesn't guarantee quality. Some special editions can be the pride of our shelves, and others will be embarrassed to admit that we fell for. From worthless tat to misleading advertising, there's a lot of ways to get stung by a collector's bundle that promised more than it either could or in fact intended to deliver. I'm Cypher What Culture, and these are 10 video game special editions that sucked. Number 10, Halo 3. One of the biggest video games of all time when it was released, Halo 3 is widely regarded as one of the best games of not just its franchise, but of its console generation. Its special editions are one thing that the game didn't quite get right, however. The Legendary Edition is probably the version most people think of first, as it memorably came packaged with a rather beautiful reproduction of Master Chief's iconic helmet. Whilst all the other goodies were nice, this this was the PS de Resistance. Unfortunately, many fans were saddened upon delivery that, despite being a helmet, they discovered they couldn't wear it as it was filled with plastic. That's a shame, but it's still made for an excellent display item. The truly sour release from Halo 3 selection was the limited edition. $70 would net you artwork, a book, and a DVD that came with the game in a shiny steelbook case. As it turns out, a rather poorly designed steelbook case. Forget the disappointment of the helmet, many of those who bought the limited edition opened their steelbooks to find they wouldn't be playing Master Chief's latest adventure on release day. Several unfortunate gamers' DVDs and game discs had come loose and been scratched in transit, rendering 2007's most anticipated game little more than a coaster. Number 9. John Woo Presents Stranglehold Cult classic 1992 Chinese action flick Hard Boiled brought together director John Woo and action star Chow Yun Fat. Not only was it a success in Asia, it also proved to delight American moviegoers during a time when importing films was not all that common. Fifteen years later, the director and actor reunited to work on a sequel, guiding Midway Studios in a surprising turn of events. Stranglehold, released for Xbox 360 and PS3, continues the story of Hard Boiled with Yun Fat back in the lead role of police detective Tequila. As a cult movie, Hard Boiled was not something everyone had seen before, so quite cleverly the PlayStation 3 Special Edition of Stranglehold came packaged with a Blu-ray of the preceding film. That way, players could enjoy the movie and familiarise themselves with it before diving into the sequel video game. It was a brilliant use of Sony's Blu-ray functionality. Considering it came with an additional extra features DVD, it was quite literally like buying a film and a game perfectly packaged together. Unfortunately, of course, Xbox owners couldn't be afforded quite the same thing, but instead of a DVD of Hard Boiled, they received the extra features DVD and that's it. At least they could hear insights about the film they couldn't see, I suppose. Very clearly, however, Xbox owners got shafted compared to the average PS3 player. Number 8. Fable 2 For a moment, Fable 2 was one of the most talked about Xbox exclusives. Not only was the first game a rare case of an RPG on the system, it had sold very well and received high critical praise. When Fable 2 got its much anticipated release date, developers Lionhead also revealed the Collector's Edition, which had a good spread of different content content, a sturdier box, special tarot cards, a hob enemy figure, a DVD, and an exclusive in-game dungeon. Better yet, it retailed at $80, which wasn't that much more than the standard game, so it was a mighty tempting offer. This exciting package got a little bit less exciting when, weeks before the game was due to arrive, Microsoft announced that supply chain issues had interrupted production, and that the Collector's Edition's boons were being severely reduced. Now the special release would simply be a DVD and a code for the special DLC, and the price would be adjusted to $70 instead. The hits kept on coming for some players, as when the now much smaller special edition arrived, some found that the DLC code was completely missing. Loftier expectations than they could deliver? Why this could never be a Peter Moller new game? Number 7. Call of Duty World at War After the release and subsequent sales success of Modern Warfare 4, Call of Duty's fans were excited about the future, and many were ravenous to pre-order the next instalment. So Activision decided to sweeten the deal for World at War by offering a collector's edition. The big talking point for this package was the inclusion of a metal drinking flask that was described as an authentic 8-ounce brushed stainless steel Call of Duty branded canteen. Question players had to ask when their limited edition copy arrived was how many authentic canteens are sealed shut. Not only was the flask not usable for drinking, it was little more than a paperweight as its shape meant that it wouldn't stand up and thus wasn't something easily displayed. There was one advantage with this collector's edition however which was it was pay to win before the phrase had even risen to dominance. Those who 
purchased the limited edition got early access to the powerful FG42 machine gun and had an exclusive free weekend of double EXP, meaning killing other players on release day was not only easier, but you got better rewards for it. If you were flush with cash, these advantages sounded great, but the unfortunate downside was this special edition was essentially punishing players who didn't pick it up. Number 6. Dying Light A lot of the worst special editions make promises that they don't keep, and you'll often find that the thing you bought doesn't reflect the advertising. That's not necessarily true of Dying Light's Spotlight Edition, it's just that this marketing stunt never got resolved. Of course, created purely for the laughs of it, Dying Light's Spotlight Edition is a true investment into a franchise's future, quite literally, as it's all in aid of financing a Dying Light movie. For the low, low price of $10 million, you can grab this rather extreme bundle that promises you acting lessons from professional VA Roger Craig Smith, your own trailer, exclusive VIP screenings, and of course, a role in the finished movie. A movie which, as of 2019, Techland are no longer actively working on. Which is probably okay, because it's safe to say no one is waiting for this special edition to actually amount to anything. If that's a little outside of your price range, however, maybe you're better off investing in the $386,000 My Apocalypse version, which will get you your own custom zombie apocalypse shelter and adult diapers. If you are hoping to pick up a rare version of Dying Light with some funky merchandising, then you're out of luck, as Techland were clearly more interested in tongue-in-cheek humour. Number 5. Resident Evil 7 Resident Evil 7's return to slow-paced, isolated survival horror saved the series from certain doom following the dismal audience reaction to RE6. The setting of a creepy house in the swamps of Louisiana was a tangibly exciting prospect, and thus it was a large selling point for the game's collector's editions. Along with your standard fare of lithographs and USB sticks, UK retailer Game revealed they would be exclusively selling a copy of Resident Evil 7 that featured a replica of the Baker house. However, as it came to release week, Game had to announce that they wouldn't be delivering the special editions as their entire shipment had arrived faulty. Angry fans were at least reimbursed for their troubles. For once, the trope of not including a game in the collector's edition meant that gamers at least wouldn't miss out on their chance to play it, assuming they pre-ordered the disc or digital version elsewhere. The US actually received a completely different version of the mansion. It's larger, much heavier, plays music, and flashes lights. Ultimately, however, as good as it is, it's only an awkwardly cut portion of the house rather than its full European counterpart. Still, at least you were more likely to receive this one in one piece. Number 4. Batman Arkham Knight The fourth and final entry into the Batman Arkham series went bigger and battier than ever before, and at long last it allowed us to get in the driver's seat of Bruce Wayne's signature wheels. This addition to the formula was a large part of the game's marketing. Appropriately, the most expensive version of Arkham Knight was the Batmobile edition, which for $200 featured an art book, a comic, and a high-quality statue of the in-game Criminal Crushing Cruiser. Unfortunately, mere weeks before the game was released, Warner Brothers announced that it would be cancelling this version due to unforeseen circumstances. Since the Batmobile was never produced, we can't comment on its quality, so that's clearly not what sucks about this special edition. What really frustrated players was that those who had pre-ordered the most expensive and exclusive edition, forking out maximum money for the next installment in the series, were suddenly empty-handed. Cancelled at the 11th hour, fans that had their payments sent back to them were out of luck if they wanted to get the next tier down for Arkham Knight, as the limited edition that came with a Batman statue had long since sold out. Stinging your most passionate fans at the last minute is not how you want to get people excited about your game. Number 3. Fallout 76 Putting aside the generally negative player reaction to the finished product, the hype for Fallout 76 was palpable before release. An always online Fallout title seemed like a perfect fit, and Bethesda took full advantage of the excitement with a ballsy special edition. The Power Armor edition of Fallout 76 was the franchise's biggest yet, which was saying something considering a version of Fallout 4 had a wearable gauntlet that integrated your phone and an app to make it feel as though you were using a Pip-Boy whilst you played. Still, the $200 release made a pretty big statement with its full-scale helmet, 24 miniature figurines, map, and West Tech branded canvas bag. However, this canvas bag turned out to be little more than a cheap nylon sack. With fans bemused and disappointed, Bethesda made a statement that read, Unfortunately, due to unavailability of materials, we had to switch to a nylon carrying case. Not a great look to admit fault at the same time as shrugging your shoulders at the fact you didn't bother to inform those who had put their money down for a different product entirely. More adding salt into the wound than covering it up, Bethesda offered those who felt slighted to file a complaint for some extra in-game goodies, but the damage had been done. Number 2. Final Fantasy XIV Everyone remembers 
the absolute torrent of controversy that was the original release of Final Fantasy XIV, an MMO so bad that Square Enix were forced to end the world using in-universe lore as an excuse to turn the servers off and start them back up again when they had basically remade the entire game. The mistakes weren't limited to the code though, and Final Fantasy XIV seemed cursed even when it came to its collector's edition, which featured an art book, a security token for your account, and a leather-bound cup. Unlike Call of Duty's sealed canteen, the flask for Final Fantasy XIV was indeed an open container. However, pretty severe warnings came packaged with it. Do not fill the product with the following materials as they may cause damage. Items including salt and solid materials, carbonated beverages, milk or other dairy beverages, fruit juices, etc. Essentially then, if you wanted to use your flask as a cup, you were limited to just water. Although the etc in that list is a little bit of a cause for concern, considering it already can't handle dairy or fruit juice. Some keen players who purchased it reported that the cup was mouldy or smelly melt bad, which begs the question, who managed to design a cup to be this outright useless? Number 1. Marvel vs Capcom Infinite The Marvel vs Capcom series isn't just one of gaming's wildest crossover fantasies, it's a genuinely beloved franchise, with titles like 2 and 3 being celebrated by the fighting game community for years after their release. 2017 saw the series return after 6 years away with Infinite. Infinite's collector's edition was a huge package that retailed at $200, and you could kind of understand why. Aside from early access to the next six DLC fighters, the key attractions were four statues and a case that contained the glowing infinity stones. The preview image was truly awesome. But handing over such a price tag means you need to deliver, and advertising for the collector's edition was sorely misrepresentative of the final piece. The image that showed shining gems was nothing but a bold-faced lie, and instead MVC fans were now the proud owners of six coloured plastic eggs. It wasn't a good way to top off the release of a game that had already had a tumultuous journey. Infinite's art style and dumbed down mechanics had already put fans on edge, but this was considered adding insult to injury. The online disappointment and fury was real, and the situation became one of those where fans were forced to laugh, otherwise they'd cry, turning the infinity eggs into a meme as they lambasted Capcom for what they had done to the series. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below, and whilst you're down there, why not mention any special editions that you bought but were ultimately dissatisfied with. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, share it with your friends, and hit that notification bell. I've been Cypher What Culture, and have a good week.